Good day. So right now I'm gonna introduce solids of revolution and how to find their volume using integrals with a very uh, simple example and hopefully it'll make great sense to absolutely everyone. So we have this marvelous little formula here that will um, very easily provide us with the volume of solids of revolution and how does this work? So let's, I'm just going to quickly illustrate it before I do the example. So let's say I got this little function here. y equals f of x, okay? And let's say that I, that I take two values a and b over here. And then if we take a look at this area and we spin it around the x-axis, how are my artistic skills today? Hopefully they're decent. It's something like that, okay? Obtaining a solid, so imagine like really taking this little area here, spinning it around the x-axis, and the volume that we get from this, from spinning the area, would actually be given by this formula right here. So the integral from a to b of pi f of x squared dx. So I'm going to use that to figure out the volume of the solid we're going to get by... Oh, that, that wasn't too bad, eh? This little <laughs> circle here, this 3D circle. By spinning around y equals x. Of course, that in this case, I just get a very simple cone. We wouldn't really need to use calculus to figure this out because we could use the cone formula, but this is just for illustrative purposes, right? Just so I can introduce this and it'll make sense to everyone. So, okay, so let's do that. Um, we want, let Q be the region bounded by the curve f of x equals x, so right here, the x-axis, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals 4. So this is Q right here. That's Q, this little area. So once we rotate Q around the x-axis, we get this cone, right? Right here, we get the, this full cone. And uh, so we want to figure out what the volume of the cone is. So let's use our formula. So our a is going to be 0, and our b is going to be 4. So we get pi f of x squared. What is the function that we're using? That's just x in this case. So we get x squared dx. Fantastic. Now, pi is a constant, so I can take it out of the integral. And we got x squared dx. And the integral of x squared is just going to be, what is the antiderivative of x squared? x cubed over 3, right? Why is that? Because, well, essentially you can just add a 1 to the exponent and then divide the x by the same value. So we get x cubed over 3, and we want to find that between 0 and 4. So I can plug in the 4 over here and subtract the same function but plugging in a zero instead right there. Great. So that's just going to give us zero. So we end up with, if we keep on going over here I guess, whoops. So we get pi times 4 cubed over 3, 4 cubed is 64, so we get 64 pi over 3 and that's it. Of course, we would get the same answer just by using the, the volume of the cone formula. Of course, as I mentioned before, we just wanted to use some integrals and calculus to illustrate the formula for volume and solids of revolution. So, hopefully that made great sense and uh, I would suggest check out some more examples. 
and try some questions. Good luck.